But I would say, I would say generally when we talk about in preparation for Alpha 2, we bring the zones that are intended to launch with somewhere between like a 60 to 70% completion perspective before it's ready for an Alpha 2. All right, so if you just got to like cut that out and like cut that out. And then you like cut that out, cut that out, you know? So this is the world map right here. And I'd say, yeah, we got about like 60%. Yep, 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 I can see it. Mm -hmm. Alpha 2 is right around the corner. So today we are diving into the map and breaking down everything that we can expect to find when we go into the world of Vera for the first time on October 25th, 2024. Starting right in the beginning, the ruins of Ayla. This area was just shown to us this past month in what is said to be the starting area in Alpha 2 and one that is pretty obviously meant to be the Kalar human zone. If you look at the original old map, they show the divine gateway locations. And on this map, you see that divine gateway right in the middle of the Riverland, where the Ruins of Ayla is said to be. The Ruins of Ayla was a capital city of the Aelin Empire, and going off the old map, you see two paths, one further into the Riverland and one heading into the Sandsquall Desert, presumably showing the Kalar making their home while the Veiloon make their way into the more natural habitat of the desert. Steven later confirmed in Vladis's 1v1 podcast that this is going to be used as a way to kind of separate players going in different directions directions and leveling up different nodes so not everybody's in the same area. Some people may be more invested in that Veiloon storyline and others may be more invested in that Kalar storyline, sending them on their separate paths. But for now, in Alpha 2, it seems to be just the Kalar for start. Steven did say that the Veiloon area is still a work in progress and unknown if we'll really see that in the beginning or not. The Ruins of Ayla is a massive starting area just from what we have seen and we are in Alpha 2. Things are just going to continue to improve and it has everything you can expect in the starting area, from low-level goblins, shady NPCs shining your medallions, and jumping puzzles that every noob can fail on. Sorry, Margaret. And up, oh, and we're <laughs> As you continue on your adventures, your quests lead you to this human staging area known as Lionhold, which has quests, crafting benches, and all sorts of things to get you started on your adventures into the world of Vera. From here, you'll eventually find your way to a node to become a citizen of. Nodes are where the magic happens, and you can become a citizen, run for mayor, build up that node as a mayor, or take on commissions, which are one of the variations of quests that Ashes of Creation has. Down the road, nodes will be home to social organizations and player housing and all that stuff that will come in the later phases of Alpha 2 testing. We saw the node Winstead in the original node showcase last year, and then we saw the node Mirrolith in the Node Wars preview a few months back, leaving three nodes to be discovered still on this Riverlands map. That Node Wars showcase also showed the two nodes of Mirrolith and Winstead fighting it out on a point of interest called the Highwayman Hills, which is shown on the map between the two nodes, which makes sense, obviously. This area was filled with NPC bandits that players needed to kill as objectives to progress in the war. Over by the node of Mirrolith, you have Oganbane Keep, an area we've seen twice now, the first being in the tank showcase, and another in the fighter showcase which showed Oganbane Keep overrun by goblins. But regardless of the threats that fill this area, it seems as though you'll want to bring a party with you before heading into these ruins to explore, as it may be a challenging fight. Just north of the ruins of Ayla, we have the Citadel of Steelbloom point of interest, which we saw in the Firebrand Showcase. This ancient citadel had a small dungeon event inside it that eventually ends to you taking a dragon egg, pissing off the dragon, and fighting the world boss to get some awesome loot. So like, just don't go here alone, or if you're playing solo, maybe with a guild or a big raid or something. Don't just wander in there because you'll die. North of the Citadel, we have Grave Peak, an area that we haven't seen in two years and was last showcased back in the first Cleric Preview, where Steven and crew headed up into this area to kill some undead zombies and show off the constellation system. To the east, we have the only dungeon on the map being the Wreckage of Carfin. This area was featured in our story arc showcase almost two years ago, showing off the ruins of the once major mage university in Vera, where students would go to learn about magic. During the fall of Vera, some gross blood magic stuff happened here where one mage tried to save the world, and from that you can see the results of it. 
undead, zombies, a glowing red mist of blood, all that good stuff. The last point of interest on the map is the Daragal Estate, which is this farmland-like area with goblins that we saw in the Bard Showcase, which seemed to have some pretty challenging NPC encounters in it, even with a full party. This leaves three points of interest on the Alpha 2 map that we have not seen, the Remnants of Sophilian, the Church of the Seven Stars, and the Ursine Caves. For other content, well, we know from the roadmap that we have 17 different world events at the end of Phase 1. This map shows 13 of them. We're said to have four micro dungeons and one mega dungeon, where I expect Carfin to be that mega dungeon. Those micro dungeons are also absent from this map, so those I expect are going to come later in this phase as well. We're also getting 149 quest slash commissions, where you can see 23 different quest gravers on the map. Commissions, though, won't come from quest givers. They come from a commission board, so I wouldn't expect to see those on the map. You also get two lawless zones, sandwiching the riverlands, being the sand squall desert and the turquoise sea tropics, and these areas are going to be pretty much void of content at the start of Alpha 2, and just be areas for players to farm high-level resources and freely kill each other while they escort some caravans to their destination point. And the desert will eventually have the Scorpy, the Scorpion world boss as well. Obviously though, while this map is shaping up pretty nice, I think it's safe to say that Steven's 60 to 70% completion of a zone to be Alpha 2 ready is no longer the case here. At least they're not showing us 60 to 70%, maybe they meant that internally. It does seem based off this map that the majority of the Alpha 2 content is happening in this one condensed area where the rest of the map is still pretty void. You also have these two biomes that are completely empty to start with the desert and tropics, so obviously not 60 to 70 percent complete. Well, in a way, this is kind of disappointing, and it goes back to that whole Intrepid needs to do a better job at setting expectations for Alpha 2 testers and viewers. I do think it'll be pretty cool to see the map evolve and grow over time as Alpha 2 progresses into the next year.